Shalom Mishpacha, Xin Jia Vietnam. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is an awesome message today. Um, I pray that you have ears to hear in ICC. Uh, I usually tell people to go away and don't come back, but this is a very important message for our time. It's got to do with where we are at the moment in history. Today is Sunday, the 19th of June, 2016. And we're about to enter into the year 2017, which is 5777, the year of the, the Jewish calendar. And so I pray that um, you sit down, relax, get your popcorn, open your Bibles with me. And as we go on and look at this message, this message is very heavy. Um, it has not been taught. I can't seem to find it anywhere out there in the world. It's not been taught. And it's quite a unique message um, regarding uh, what's happening with the way we study the scriptures and the way we're trying to find um, uh, Christ and Mashiach. We'll get straight into it so that uh, we don't, I don't want to waste your time. Um, so I pray that uh, I just do a short prayer. Father, open our eyes so that we can see the wonders of your Torah. Hashem Yeshua and your son, Mashiach. Amen. <coughs> now, you can see the picture there. It's got to do with this goat. This goat, and we will explain more about this goat. So this, this, topic, this topic today is about this goat. Okay? And it's really about, the question is, who was Judah? Alright? In the, in, the, in the renewed covenant, the new renewed testament, you call him Judas Iscariot. The first thing you have to understand is, Ju Iscariot is not his surname, okay? Judas and Iscariot is not his surname. He's Judah. Ish means man. And Cariot is the, the, from the town of Judea where he came from. So it is Judah, the man from uh, Cariot. Okay, so, and then uh, the Greek called him Judah Ish Cariot. So Ish means man. All right, so pause that. You don't understand. Google that. You'll get that understanding. It's not his surname. His surname is Judah Ben Simon. Simon is when you go to Luke chapter 1 about Anna and um, the priest um, Simon when he was waiting for Yeshua or, or Jesus in the Greek um, to come and to give him, um, to hand him up as, as a, uh, uh, that's, um, to hand him up um, to, to be uh, blessed. Okay, <coughs> so we, for those who are new, um, I'll, I'll speak in tongues for a moment, okay. Um, Jesus is the Greek name or English name that you guys call him. Yeshua is the Hebrew name. So the Jewish Messiah, his name is Yeshua. And in Vietnamese, in Yik, men kêu chúa là chúa Yesu. But men phải cầm cái ayin. The ayin is the a. So men phải kêu chúa chúa Yesu a. Yesu a. So in Yik là đúng là men phải nói cái từ chúa Yesu a là Yesu a. Which chúng giống người Hebrew là người Hebrew nói cái từ là Yesu a. Okay, back to uh, normal English now. Sorry about. Okay, so those for my Vietnamese, um, those who are watching in Vietnamese, we're just correcting the name Yeshua. And I, I do hope and pray that you will go and study the name Yeshua in the proper context, which will lead you back to the Jewish Messiah. Okay, from the from Israel, and that's very important because we we need to know the the context of how uh, Christ walked and lived this earth. All right, let's get into Judas, Judah. <coughs> okay. Very important. Y Yeshua said he is the door and he gave the key to the kingdom to Peter. All right. Every door has a key. Every door needs a key. But every door also needs a keyhole. <coughs> All right. Guess what this keyhole is called? It's called the Judas Iscariot keyhole. Isn't that amazing? So I'll go on with that. All right. So Judas Iscariot is the keyhole. All right. Now, <clears throat> let me go on. I'm going to go through really quick. So there's the key. Uh, we're going to put the pieces together. Um, and I, I do ask that you pause it and go and study this because the stuff that... Now, back to the, back to the uh, Ju Judah. Yeshua had no fault in him. Okay, he, he had no fault. And now, I don't know if I'll put this up for you guys. Basically, okay, um, he had no fault. There were, the, the, the high priest at that time could not find any fault 
The only fault they could find was blasphemy. Now, those who know the Torah law, blasphemy, the only way you can be killed is by stoning. All right? Not by dying on a stake. So therefore, therefore, in order for Yeshua to bring redemption, to forgive us from our guilt of sin, right? He could not break any of his Torah laws. Therefore, he needed an escape goat. He needed a Judas goat. And this is what we call a Judas goat. It is a goat that brings, that leads the sheep to the slaughter. Its primary job of a Judas goat is a trained goat used in general animal herding. The Judas goat is trained to associate with sheep or cattle, leading, to, leading them to a specific destination, all right, to, to, to the slaughter. That's what the purpose of a Judas goat is. And it's amazing they named this goat Judas goat. <coughs> like this picture that we see here, Judas. All right, and we'll get into that. But I want to give you the, the concept. Every door, Yeshua is the door. Peter has the key. Every key is unique to a keyhole. You need to open that keyhole. Judas is, Judah is the keyhole. What I'm saying here is Judah from the tribe of Judah is the keyhole. The people who are in the land of Israel who are keeping the Torah, they are the keyhole. The key has to fit into the keyhole in order to open the door, which is Yeshua, in order to enter life. You have to understand that concept in order to understand where I'm going. All right? They, could, they can't find any fault with Yeshua. He was perfect, right? The only thing he said was, the only thing he said was, uh, are, are you the son of God? And he said, you have said so, okay? And then they, the high priest ripped up, ripped up this garment, transferred power. That's another lesson. And he, he, he called Yeshua blasph uh, blasphemer. So therefore, the, the Torah, therefore the death sentence of a blasphemer is by stoning, not by stake. So therefore, we've got now a situation where something is really happening uh, with this event with, with Judah and Yeshua and John the Baptist. <coughs> so Peter has the key. So our job today is to put the pieces together so that you will have a better understanding. All right. So in Matthew 26, chapter 26, Yeshua before the Sanhedrin. Okay. Now I will. The, so the context is Yeshua before the Sanhedrin. Because he has been, uh, let me go back. He has gone. He has he has gone through Annas already in John, and then he went to um, Caiaphas, and now he's at the San Sanhedrin. This is his third trial because they can't find fault with him. All right. So in order to find fault with him, something special had to happen within his disciples. All right, and that was Judah. Okay, so. The chief priests, verse 59, the chief priests uh, and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Yeshua so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. All right, verse 64, okay, uh, verse 63. But Yeshua remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath, Nidah, which is what we learned uh, the Torah portion of Nisor about the Nazarene vow. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I charge you under the oath, Nidah, by the living Elohim. Tell us if you are the Mashiach, the son of Elohim. <coughs> and Yeshua said, you have said so. But I say to you, all of you, from now on you will see the son of man, Ben, uh, ben Ha-Adam, sitting at the right hand of the El Shaddai and coming on the clouds of Shamayim, heavens. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. Okay, that was his death sentence. But blasphemy is by stoning. <coughs> right? It's by stoning. Correct me if I'm wrong. I love to be corrected. All right, let's move on. So therefore, Yeshua had done nothing wrong. No one could find fault with him. Even, um, even Pilate, right? <coughs> he was a perfect lamb. All right. Blasphemy means reviling Elohim. In the Hebrew, it is known as Chilchat uh, Hashem, literally means cursing the name of Elohim. The one guilty of this offense is called mega, mega death, a blasphemer. In the, in the two main passages in the Bible, Leviticus and 1 Kings 21, the penalty of this offense is stoning to death. It is, however, none too clear what exactly is involved in the offense. Does it mean to insult God or does it mean to curse God? According to the Gospel of Matthew 26 and Mark chapter 14, 
Yeshua was tried by the Sanhedrin on a charge of blasphemy. But the Renewed Testament scholars have puzzled over both the questions of this historic uh, cool event and the precise nature of the offence. Even more puzzling is the definition given in the Mishnah, Sanhedrin 7.5, that the penalty of stoning for the blasphemer applies only when he uses the tetragrammaton. Te 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 I started like I started like Moses. Okay, so forgive me for that. Which, with which to curse God by His name? Let the tet let the tetranagon the let the tetran curse the tetramagon. Okay, so you can find the link there. So, if the charge was blas blasphemy, he had to die by stoning, not by the stake. So therefore, we got an issue here. Therefore, in order for Judah. In order for Yeshua to rid us of this guilt of sin, which was awesome because he laid down his life for us, right? For God so loved the world that he gave up his only son. But there had to be something, there had to be another player involved, another player involved. But the world has rejected this player, this person named Judah. They call him Judah Iscariot. The problem is it's very anti Semitic. The New Testament, from a non Jewish, from a Jewish, back, from a Jewish background, which I'm starting to understand is very anti-Semitic as well towards Judah. All right, because every time you hear the, the name Judah Iscariot, next to his name is the betrayer, the betrayer, the betrayer, the one who betrayed, the one who betrayed the Lord, the one who betrayed the Christ. You have to understand they are pounding this message into the church for two thousand years to hate, to tell us to hate Israel, to tell us to hate Judah, the Jewish people. That is the whole goal. I'm here today to say to you, it is not so. I'm here today to say to you, we have been misled. Our fathers have sold us lies and vanities. And we're here to correct this in this time frame, 2016, because next year is an awesome year and we really need to get ready. Because every man will grab onto the zit zits of a Jew. And that is the word of Hashem. That is the word of God and that is going to come true. Every Gentile from a nation will grab onto the zitzits of a Jew and say, we have been sold lies, teach us your ways. And this is coming, my brothers and sisters, it is coming, the day of the Lord is coming, judgment day is coming, and I pray and hope that your spirit is ready, the Holy Spirit is in you, the Ruach HaKadosh is in you, to actually hear what I'm saying, because from my point of view that I'm sharing this, it sounds ridiculous, okay? I, I don't want to share this message, it has been on my heart for a very long time, I have meditated over this and prayed over this. Please follow with me. Okay, please follow with me. Judah has been sold by the Gentile nation as a trader, but he wasn't. Even, was he, even if he was a trader, he did an actual good thing because he led the sheep to the slaughter. Yeshua had no fault. Jesus had no fault in him. Therefore, he needed a Judas goat to lead him to the slaughter. And that was exactly what Judas, Judah did for us. And we will see that. And it will become very clear for you what the church fathers have misled us in. What your pastors have misled us in. In not allowing you to study properly. Let's continue. The key. Peter has the key. The keyhole is Judah. You have to understand that. The keyhole is Judah. All right, there is information about the, the, the Judas goat, the Judas uh, keyhole, and there is the Judas key, uh, the Judas tree. Tree, goat, and keyhole. Very important. <coughs> now, on the Mount of Figuration, we see Yeshua there, we see Moshe there, and we see Elijah the prophet there. All right, but in the time of the time of Yeshua reigning. John the Baptist died. Yeshua died. And Judah died. John the Baptist's head got cut off. Yeshua on the stake. And, and Judah, he fell down as an escape goat. And he, his bowels um, came open. All right? So, there are, many, there are two different sides to that story of how Judah died. And we will fix that up today. All right, but I want you. I want to pay attention to the priesthood, to the officers, office. 
An office is something you are elected into or um, called into to do a, a job. All right, that's that's the type of office I'm talking about. So the Melchizedek priesthood, you've got the priesthood of the of, of the Levitical priesthood, and you've got the priesthood of the rabbis, the teachers like Paul or Sheol. All right, the Levitical priesthood at that time. Uh, came from the descendants of Aaron. They worked in the temple of Jerusalem. All right. So we got the Melchizedek priesthood, who are called the Netzarims, the Netza Netzarims. All right. And then we got the Sadducees, which are from the line of Aaron. And then we got the Pharisees, which are the teachers of the law, the scribes of the law. Okay. And they were the people who they operate out of the lo local synagogues. Rabbis at that time did not receive payment for their teaching. They were expected to have a secular job in, uh, instead. Notice that Paul was a tent maker, all right? Acts and First Chronicles, all right? They were the Pharisees. Yeshua or Jesus had most problems with the Pharisees, okay? Because they were the ones that were going around and putting more burdens on the people. We have to understand that. The law of the Torah is very simple to the soul. But the teachers made it harder for people to come in, to be grafted into the natural olive tree. Okay, so keep in mind that. Keep in mind that Melchizedek, Yeshua, Levitical, John the John the Baptist. All right, and the rabbis, which was Judah. Judah is mainly the rabbis of today. All right. So what what have I got here? So we've got the uh, this. Okay, despite the mutual hostility, the two groups served together on the Sanhedrin, which was the last group that trialed Yeshua, the Sanhedrin, the ruling body of the Jews. When he was on the trial before the Sanhedrin, Paul used the facts, fact that its priests and rabbis had differing views to start an argument which jammed the machinery of justice and got him a charge, got him a change of venue to a Roman court, Acts chapter 23. So it is, it is those groups, okay? Uh, basically, I'm trying to show you there is, as Yeshua operated, also how the priests would operate, or the officers operate, okay? So we got the office of the kings, um, the, the prophets, and um, uh, the kings, the prophets, and the priests. Right? That's the offices. So there's the office of a king, the office of, of a priest, and the office of a prophet. We also got the office of the Melchizedek priesthood, the office of the priesthood of the Levitical priesthood, and we also got the normal rabbis, the teachers like your pastors. All right. If you're getting lost, please pause it, uh, meditate on it. It's, 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 we're, we're nearly there. You, you keep up with me. <coughs> Don't lose track. I'm just trying to show you the whole picture of why John the Baptist had to die. Okay? Because that, that's another lesson for itself. John the Baptist, he, he was, you know, he came and in the same time frame when he was in jail, he questioned, he's this, he questioned Yeshua, are you the one? Are you the one? And then Yeshua said, go send um, John's disciple back and tell John that the, 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 the blind is seeing and the deaf is hearing and the lame is walking. And John said, yes, it's time for me to die uh, because it's him. It, it's the Mashiach. So he died. And then it's Yeshua's turn. And then it's Judah's turn. You watch the way this story unfolds. All right. So the Melchizedek is Yeshua, Moses, Abraham. John, uh, the priesthood of the Le Levitical priesthood is uh, from his father, Zechariah. All right, which was governing the, the which was the the rightful owner of the the priesthood at that time. The reason why John the Baptist was in the wilderness is because the priesthood was corrupted. This is what I'm saying. I'm going to pause it now. The rabbis say the reason why God took the Israelites out of Egypt <coughs> because they were at the 40, 49th level of of sin, of, of being corrupted. So the 50th level, you, there's no return for them. So God had to take the people out at that 49th level. Now you can study that, okay? It's the same here. Yeshua had to come down because at that time, the priesthood was corrupted. The kingship was corrupted. Who owned the rightful kingship at that time? Who was supposed to be the king of Israel at that time? It wasn't Herod. So Herod, so they were buying the kingship. They were buying the priesthood and, and the rabbis were buying the rabbis, uh, the, the, the office of the rabbis. You see, it wasn't legit. It wasn't called by the Ruach HaKadosh. God wasn't moving people. So basically, all three offices were corrupted at the 49th level. All right? Yeshua came down. 
We are entering the 49th level, 2016, 2017, where the world is going to be so corrupted that Mashiach it has, is the force to come. Okay? The rabbis say Mashiach comes in two ways. When, when we are either so holy or when we are either so corrupted. All right? At the 49th level. Study that 49th level. I guarantee you it will add another dimension to your foundation of faith in Munah. <coughs> All right? Let's talk about the Judas goat. Very important goat. You will love this goat. This goat is just trained to lead, to lead cattle and sheep to slaughter. All right? Judas. A Judas goat is trained in general animal herding. A Judas goat will lead sheep to slaughter while its own life is spared. All right? Judah led Yeshua to the stake. Yeshua was blameless, therefore he needed Judah or the Judas goat to bring him to slaughter. Else Yeshua would have to break his own Torah. He had to sin. He had to do something bad in order to be, to be to give a death sentence. He couldn't break his own Torah. He was sinless. But he bore the guilt for us. He bore the guilt for us. That's another lesson. All right? I have so many, but that's just another lesson. Let's continue on. <coughs> Acts, Acts chapter 1. Very important here. Starting at the, the, the context is they are choosing someone to replace Judah. Okay? So Judah, the Judas goat is to guide, to guide the sheep to slaughter. To guide. Listen carefully what Peter is saying. Verse 15. In those days, Kepha, Peter stood up among the believers, in bracket, a group numbering 120. Now, when you see in bracket, um, pay attention because it's not supposed to be there. And Peter said, Brothers and sisters, the scriptures had to be fulfilled in which the Ruach HaKodesh spoke long ago through David concerning Judah. What is going on here? Who served as a guide for those who arrested Yeshua. Did you hear that? The Holy Spirit spoke long ago through King David concerning Judah who served as a guide for those who arrested Yeshua. He was one of us. He was one of us and also shared in our ministry. First verse 17 is a, a massive clue. <coughs> All right. Now, here comes the brackets. I put it in purple because it's brackets. And then it tells you how he died. Okay, I don't know who inserted this because this is very anti-Semitic. With the payment he received of his wickedness, Judah bought a field. Therefore, he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines fell out. Everybody in Jerusalem heard about this. So they called the field in their own language, Akedama, which is field of blood. Woohoo! And then verse 20. For Peter said, It is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. Now, when you read that, that section of Psalms, it doesn't even make sense what, what, how Peter is quoting there. So whoever put that there, that's not even fit with what he's talking about, the context about here, about how Judas, uh, okay? But my point is that I'm going to bring you to the, um, the Orthodox Jewish Bible. <coughs> Verse 15. And at that time, having stood up, Kepha in the midst of the Achim, Be Mashiach, and he said, Achim, Be Mashiach, the Kive HaKadosh, had to be fulfilled through the Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit, foretold through the pen, the penne of David HaMelech concerning Yehuda, who became a guide to the ones arresting Yehoshua. Verse 17, For he had been numbered among us and had received his ministry in the Messianic Avodash Kodesh, which is the work of the set apart. It's the work of the Mashiach Shedachim. The Shedachim means messenger or em 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 emissary. The definition of emissary is someone sent on a mission to represent the interests of someone else. <coughs> John the Baptist lay, was the forerunner who laid the, the foundation for Yeshua to come. We have to understand, and then Yeshua came. And in order for Yeshua to give up his life, another forerunner had to lay his life. Do you see the picture now? There is a massive 
play going on, but the church has made you all hate Judas. They made you hate Judas with every Hollywood has made you hate Judas. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that Judah, brother Judah, or you call them, or you call them the Jews, they have kept the oracles of Hashem for thousands of years. They have been they have kept it for us. But I'm telling you, by the end of 2017, the doors of the Gentiles will be closed and their eyes will be opened and every man will grab onto the zitzits of a Jew. I hope you can see what I'm sharing with you. Let's go. <coughs> so he shared in the ministry. He had his reward. This is the Judas tree. They call this the Judas tree. Why? Because they said Judas hang from it. Look at the beautiful colors. It's purple and it's white. Those who do Torah, when something turns to white, when something that is crimson red turns to white, what does that tell you? Isn't that amazing? The Judas tree is a common name for a flowering tree. I can't even say it. From which Judah, from which Judah, the man from Ishkariot, is uh, reputed to have hanged himself. The crimson, now my, my connection here is with the two escape goats. And the way that goat, you know, the goat, um, when your shooter, uh, when your shoe was led to the outside and they were going to push him off the cliff and then he disappeared. This goat, the, the story now is that the goat, when the goat that's released goes into the wilderness, but it, it comes back. After a while, the rabbis got angry at this, so they led him to the cliff and that goat would, would fall down the cliff. And of course, like um, Acts chapter 1, it's bows. When you fall down a cliff, of course, your body is just flat open. Think about that. How connects that with the goat and the way Judas fell headlong down and his intestines for that? The crimson, the crimson cloth tied to the Azazel goat. A portion of the red cloth was also removed from the goat and tied to the temple door. Each year, the red cloth on the temple door turned white, as if signifying the atonement of another Yom Kippur was ex accepted to other night. Okay, so you can find that. So the tree had two colors: purple and and white. Okay. Now, we know this painting. This painting has been given to us in Hollywood and you know everywhere. It's, it's from the 12 apostles and the Last Supper. My question to you is, where is Judas sitting? You see, we've been told that those who are sitting next is you know, young little John who put his head on Yeshua's chest and, and, and Judas is all the way outside because he's a money-hungry Jew. We have to understand, Judas is not, Judas is, Judah is not money-hungry. When you read this passage where the woman who broke the alabaster jar, right, and, and what one year's wages, which is about uh, three thousand something dollars, or I can't remember, <coughs> right? It's it's expensive. One year's wages, and and Judah sold Yeshua for thirty pieces of silver. Thirty pieces of silver in today's equivalent is only three thousand dollars. All right. So and pay attention. It wasn't Judah who said, "Oh, we should have given that to the poor." But even if Judah said that, it would have made sense. Because his heart was for, for the poor. And the way Judah kissed Yeshua, on the, on the night he betrayed Yeshua, you know, Psalm says, kiss the king or else you'll be angry. You know, when we come into our, our house, the mezuzah said, we kiss the king or else you'll be angry. Judah is a perfect example of a loyal Jew. A loyal subject, a loyal servant, a loyal Jew. All right? And we have the world has portrayed Judah as a, as a hungry uh, treasurer, uh, who looked after the finances. You know, when Yeshua needed money to pay taxes, what did he, did he do? He said to Peter, go down, go fishing, get me a couple of fishes, open his mouth, and there's the money. When the disciples were hungry, what did Yeshua do? He got up one bread, broke it up, and then became thousands of loaves of bread. Did the disciples need money? Every time the disciples went out, two by two, did they need money? No. Therefore, money was not their concern, right? It is only because you, we have been taught by the wrong church fathers that money was uh, the biggest issue of, the, of that time for the disciples. No, Judah did not need money. The 30 piece of silver was just something that needed the attentions of the high priest. All right, we will get into that. But what I'm trying to say to you here is when you read the events of the, uh, the woman when she broke the Ambassador jar of perfume, and, and, and all the things were in reference to Judah being money hungry. Pay attention, it's not Judah. All right, it's not Judah. So, where is Judah sitting? Let's go to the scriptures. <coughs> Luke chapter 22, verse 20. Luke 22 to 20. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant, the renewed covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the cup. Watch that. The cup. And, and, and the same hand on the cup, right? They're drinking the cup together. This is a covenant. They're making a covenant, right? <laughs> the Son of Man will go as it has been decreed. Oh, that's awesome. But woe to the man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves of which it might be who would do this. How do you hold a cup? How would Judas, Judah hold the cup if he's sitting far away from Yeshua? Right? <coughs> Judas was right the closest. A treasurer, a treasurer is always closest to his master. The two never separated. All right? Someone who looks after the money, the, the secretary, the treasurer is always closest to the one who, who works with him. You have to understand that. We have just been sold lies. I'm just trying to put the pieces together so that you, after this you can turn it off, meditate on it, pause on it, and get a different perspective on Judah. John chapter 13, starting at verse 26. <clears throat> Yeshua answered. Now this is all regarding the, the last supper he had with his disciples, the graduation. I call it the graduation meal before he sends them out, before he goes. Yeshua answered. It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I dipped it in the dish, when I have dipped it in the dish, then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judah, the son of Simeon. Right? The Ish carried from the man from Ish carried, the man from carried, <coughs> the son of Simeon. Verse 27. As soon as Judah took the bread, Hasatan entered him. That is awesome. Now you watch the play here because it it got everything to do with so it's so Jewish it's so Jewish in the core, <laughs> right? Going back to the picture, how could Judas, how could Judas get the bread unless he's sitting right next to Yeshua, right? Verse twenty six. It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I dip it in the dish. Let's go to Matthew twenty six because we need more evidence. When evening came, Yeshua was reclining at the table with the twelve. <coughs> And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to one another, Surely you don't mean me, Adonai. Yeshua replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe well to that man who betrays the Ben Adam. Ben Ha Adam, sorry. It would be better for him if he had not been born. He's talking about Satan here. <clears throat> All right, we, We'll see this later on. Because Satan entered Judah. Then Judah, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Yeshua answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Yeshua took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke, broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take it and eat this. Judah was still there. He accepted that. He accepted that covenant, that contract, that, uh, that mission. That mission. All right? That mission. The word mission. Em emissary. Someone sent on a mission to represent the interests of someone else. All right? Now, that picture is definitely wrong. So the correct picture is this. They were repining. Okay, and we can see uh, little John there, and then we can see uh, Judah, the one holding his chest. <gasps> Is it me? Me? You, you've chosen me. You see that? <clears throat> Judah, Judah, the son of Simeon, Luke chapter 1, the high priest at that time, who lifted up the baby Yeshua. Oh, it's amazing. And his father died seven days after the feast of Sukkot because he said, I have seen Mashiach. You know, it's, it's amazing, this whole thing that's putting... But you need to see it through Jewish eyes, Jew, Jewish lenses, Hebraic eye understanding. You will never get this, all right? I'm so excited. I hope you're excited with me. Now, let's get back to what exactly they were dipping in. They were dipping in because only Jewish people know what they were dipping into, all right? It is Passover. They were dipping in. It is Last Supper. You go to any Jewish house on the Erev Shabbat, Shabbat, they're dipping. They're always dipping in something. It's called the Covenant of Salt. They're dipping bread into salt. Okay? <clears throat> bread, the candles, the wine, the salt. Every Jewish house has salt. 
Numbers 18, 19, salt in the Bible. Okay, um, the salt in the Bible is a symbol of loyalty, of the relationship. <laughs> Many desert tribes, even today, put salt on the hands of a couple when they marry. Wow, that's a covenant between a man and a woman. A covenant of salt. Numbers 18, chapter 18. Is a forever covenant of loyalty in relationship. In Matthew 5, chapter 5, Believers in Yeshua are called to be salt and light. Light refers to our testimony to pre-believers. Salt refers to our relationship with each other. The inability of the believers to get along puts the light out. We must have salt with one another. Yeshua said, By this all will know that you are my disciples. If you love, if you have love for one another. John 13. We can't be light to be we can't be light to be unsaved if we aren't salt to one another. Okay. <clears throat> it's a salt covenant. If you ever go to a Jewish house and I pray that at the doors of our Jewish eyes, our Jewish brothers will open soon and they will invite the Gentiles into the home, sit there and have a meal. You watch. They do the bracha, the blessing, they dip it in the salt, they eat. The Hebraic understanding is when you come into my house and I don't have salt on the table, it means you're not welcome. You're not welcome here. But when I do have salt on the table, it means you're welcome. Okay, let's get into... Uh, um, okay, um, and now... Um, so you can go to... You can Google a site called Why do we dip the kala bread in salt? Why do we dip the bread in salt? That will give you a bit more understanding, okay? So the table is the altar, right? And the table is the altar. And... and uh, Okay, so I'm going to the next slide. Let me see what I've got. Okay. <coughs> So Google, why do we dip bread in the salt? This comes up. Satan and the covenant of salt. It is important to have salt on the table. Why? At the start of a meal, we wash our hands, okay? And then sit down to wait for everyone else to do the same. The Midrash, the discussion, explains that while we wait silently, one may not talk between washing and blessing over the bread. We are, we are, Beret, grieving of the mitzvahs. At this, at that point, the prosecutor, the, the prosecuting angel, okay, Hasatan, the adversary, tries to draw attention to this shortcoming. So he's around us because he's trying to come and see. Oh, I'm gonna, who's gonna break the mitzvah? Who's gonna talk? Right? Okay. We, I know you don't understand this because we don't live as Jews, but this is what they do. However. The covenant of salt mentioned above protects us. Why is it a covenant of salt? What has salt got to do with our bond with God? Salt is a preservative that neither spoils nor decays. These unique properties make salt the perfect metaphor for God's eternal covenant with His people. When in John it says, <coughs> Yeshua answered in John, It is the one whom I give this piece of bread. When I dip it in the dish, they both dip it in together. They made a covenant of loyalty, of friendship. As soon as Judah took the bread, Satan entered him. So Satan was around. Okay? So we have to understand the context. Go. I'm not going to go anymore, but in, in the covenant of salt is a heavy study. So I urge you to go and study that. Because it's very important. <coughs> okay? Um, that's where uh, so we can see how the Jewish people have this, this concept where the Satan is always hanging around to always find guilt. All right. At that time, Judah allowed that to happen. It, it's like Yeshua allowed guilt to come upon him. He took the guilt of the world. He took the sins of the world. Judah took Satan, Satan into him in order to portray and, and be the persecutor to lead the, the, the living son of God to die for us. He had to do it. And, and Yeshua said, it is better for that man to have never been born. It, was, it would have been better for Satan who have never been created. Okay. Where am I going now? Where am I up to? Oh, I'm fast forwarding too much. <coughs> okay. So Judah's death. I spelled it wrong. Sorry there. It should be a H. Okay. So Matthew 26 and Acts chapter 1. Both got two different um, scenarios of, of Judas dying on the stake. Uh, dying. Alright. So both, both are different. One says he hanged himself. One says he fell down. Alright, so basically what I'm saying to you is someone touched the, 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 the scriptures. 
someone touched it and therefore we don't have a, un a clear understanding of what is happening of, of the death of Judah but all I know is the pattern of the Torah of the escape goat how they push the scapegoat down the cliff to make sure that the goat doesn't come back or bring the sin back into the camp is exactly as Acts 1 what Peter what Peter stood up and said all right so it's very clear all right brothers and sisters the scriptures had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago about David concerning Judah who served as a guide for those who arrested Yeshua <coughs> and a lot of questions saying oh Ben how do you know um, it is the son uh, uh, it is Judah okay so this reference is there in Yochanan John chapter 6 that it is Yehuda Ben Simeon chapter 13 chapter 13 Ben Yehuda okay and John he answered is the one who dipped his bread all right so I'm not gonna <coughs> uh, we're getting there we're finishing soon this is where the town uh, where the plot of land is where they um, he bought that 30 silver 30 piece of silver for okay we're wrapping up we're wrapping up all right <coughs> for our Jewish brothers I got this from uh, Nazarene Judaism this slide because I think it's awesome all right I'm just gonna read it out for you we, we finish um, a rabbi speaks I had a I had thought the New Testament to be impure a source of pride of overweening selfishness of hatred of the worst kind of evidence see the Jewish people because the reason why they can't see Yeshua is we present Yeshua Jesus as a man that's idol worship Yeshua is the word who became flesh the Torah okay that is our mindset to present Yeshua in the Torah all right we have done if, if if the word who became flesh came into a CD player we don't worship the CD player if, if it came through a um, it came through a book the word we don't worship the, the, the Torah scroll we don't it is the word that became flesh we don't work okay just get that mindset that's what the rabbi is saying here <coughs> but as I opened it I felt myself particularly particularly and wonderfully take, taken possession of a sudden glory a light flash through my nefesh soul I looked for thorns and gathered roses I discovered pearls instead of pebbles instead of hatred love instead of venge vengeance forgiveness instead of bondage freedom instead of pride humility instead of enmity constellation instead of death life salvation Yeshua resurrection heavenly treasures from the rabbi Yitzhak Lich Ten Zen all right <coughs> The message will be given to our Jewish brothers. They will see him very soon. The doors of the Gentiles are closing. All right. Yeshua is the door. Peter is the key. Judah is the keyhole. Judah is the keyhole. Only through Judah we are able to open the door of the Jewish Messiah to enter into the new Jerusalem. Speaking of, I just want to close up to get you ready for the to be a wise virgin to trim your lamps read the book of Judges the story of Samson read the book of Esther chapters 1, 2 and 3 to understand the, the, the two types of women the wise and the foolish the one who rejected the, the one who slept or rejected the, the groom and the one who trimmed her lamps and waited for the groom to come <coughs> in Hebraic sense when a, bri when a bride is is waiting for her, her groom who's gone away to build the mansion for us she she lights a, a lamp and puts it on the windowsill and that lamp at night tells the other guys the other men or uh, who are looking for for girls that this house is spoken for it is it is taken I am taken I, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine okay all right and so every night we trim our lamps we put on our wedding garments, we put on our zitzits, and we wait for the Mashiach. <coughs> the zitzits with the blue is our wedding garment, is our zitzits, our trimming of the lamps. Every, every week we do the Torah portion. We do one cycle of the Torah in order to have the wedding garments on. Okay, okay, you can't just buy your oil at the last moment or trim your lamps at the last moment. You haven't done the Shabbat, you haven't kept the feast. You can't just wear on the wedding garment and expect to enter into the wedding. You will probably be a wedding guest 
but not part of the wedding. You're not part of the bride. So, <clears throat> what I'm saying to you is, the, the girls at that time, the foolish virgins, they, 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 they saw their light goes out, they couldn't be bothered. So every night, you got all these other type of men coming and knocking on the door. Hey, hey beautiful, you want to come out and play? You know, so they're worshipping different idols, they're worshipping different days, different names, different dates, different feasts, different gods, different religions, okay? <laughs> they, they, opened, they opened themselves to different things. And when the cry called out at midnight, the hour, midnight, that it was too late for them, alright? And they ran to, to, to put on their garment, but it was too late, alright? So that's, that's my, that's my um, this, this is the study of Judah, Judah Ish. Carriot, the man from Ishkariot. Um, any questions, please go to www.betnetzermin.com.au. I will put these slides up there. If you're a pastor or a leadership, we, please take it and use it and, and, and share it with your fellowship, share it with your shul and kahila, share it with your church. It is a message that needs to get out because at the end of the day, the doors of the Gentiles are closing and our Jewish brothers will see the, the light of Mashiach coming. Shalom, shalom, mishpacha. May, may Abba increase and favor you, favor us above all people. Shalom.